Howdy howdy. What are the most dreadful episodes of recent kids cartoons? For the good cartoons, these occasional stinkers are a horrible shock to the families watching them. Of otherwise standout kids entertainment, good cartoons like Bluey and Thomas and Friends. But for those other shows, it's pretty much what everyone expected of Caillou. Anyway, good or bad shows, these are the most reviled, detestable episodes I could find. So let's check out modern kids cartoons' worst episodes. And like before, when I say kids cartoons, I'll be focusing on the cartoons aimed at little, little kids. So no Spongebob for now, but he'll be back. And when I say modern, mostly episodes from 2020 plus, with a couple of exceptions. With that said, let's begin. With that said, let's begin. Let's start with number eight. Bluey Charades. <gasps> oh, come on. Sh surely a three season show can manage a few bad episodes, right? If it makes you feel any better, Bluey was the hardest show to find a bad episode for in this whole video. You probably know by now, Bluey is a young kids show made by the ABC in my home country, Australia, and I'm very proud of it, in collaboration with BBC from England. Maybe the collaboration is Britain's way of apologizing for Peppa Pig. And you know what? Apology accepted. Because Bluey has a humble feel, charming animation, and surprisingly realistic body language. It has excellent voice acting, and it has level-headed, thoughtful messages to kids. 99% of the time. We'll get to that. While with typical Aussie kids shows, the parents would roll their eyes. A lot of Aussie parents legitimately enjoy watching Bluey with their kids. It even has a lot of adult fans that appreciate it. Anyway, you can go to any other cartoon YouTuber for an analysis on Bluey, and they'll do a great job. You and I both know it's good, so what's the worst episode? Rating-wise, it was a tie between Tina and Wild Girls. These were the two lowest-rated Bluey episodes on IMDb, which at 7.2 are still not very bad ratings. And when I asked the community what the worst episodes were, they said, uh, uh... But one person suggested the episode Charades, and it was a good suggestion. So that's three episodes in our search for the worst Bluey episode. And eventually, I decided on Charades and Tina as the two worst episodes. We'll talk about the terrible Tina later. Wild Girls was harmless enough, with the kids picking a game they like playing together in the bush, with a very stubborn Coco obsessed with playing Wild Girls only. But again, it's rectified, and both the kids and adults help Coco through her struggle. So Wild Girls is off the list, it was fine. But charades? It, it was legitimately bad. As the name implies, Granny plays charades with the kids. And yeah, it's a definite winner in the search for the worst. As Muffin is an absolute brat in this episode. But I wanna do the ballerina! And yeah, kids can absolutely be this stubborn in real life. But this is really high up levels of shrill brattiness. I certainly understand why the community suggested it for the worst. I mean, for my niece and nephew, I wouldn't personally indulge this level of stubbornness, as life is rarely going to be as accommodating as Grandma. Oh, with the shrieking. Oh, yeah, Muffin needs a little quiet time in his room. Let's call this one of the two worst, as I've more to show you in Tina. Hey, Nim, you've helped raise three kids, honey. What did you think of this episode? In parenting, there's a fine line between indulging kids and spoiling kids, and Muffin is really spoiled here. Like old Caillou, it sets a terrible example for little kids. And that shrill squeal is migraine material. Ugh. Number 7 Up, Up and Away from Season 15 of Thomas and Friends I personally don't think all the modern CG episodes of Thomas and Friends are bad. I watched a few episodes of season 15 to catch myself up, and I genuinely enjoyed them. There's still some good writing in these episodes, right in the spirit of the old. Sure, the modern CG doesn't always look good. In fact, sometimes it looks downright creepy. But if you can get used to that creepy style, there are some good stories here. But Up and Away is the real deal of terrible. And as I said, there's that rather big problem. 
Thomas and his trained friends now sit right on the end of the uncanny valley. They still look creepy and unsettling, but mostly to adults. Adults are used to what human faces look like, so to us, it looks downright creepy. It's no wonder when the model railroads went, a lot of the adult crowd tuned out of this series. Now Thomas is half train model, half nightmare. No matter how they try, I just don't think trained faces should be moving their lips like that. So why was Up recommended as the worst episode? Well, I think for good reason. The dialogue is just abysmal in this one. For some reason, the characters talk a lot of mindless jibber-jabber here. This is a very special, special Percy. The most special, special- You know, originally in episodes, Thomas talked like an intelligent life form capable of tactically transporting dangerous cargo. I'm sorry we teased you, Percy, said Thomas. You were certainly put upon by that avalanche. Yes, indeed, but just look at my new coat of paint. What is this four-year-old babble rot? Basically, Thomas and Percy have one simple task, to transport a balloon. And rather than using any tactics or common sense when it gets loose, they're just like, don't worry, maybe the balloon will come back by itself. No, Thomas, we should wait and watch for the big balloon. It's sure to float back to us. This is the same problem as the notorious episode Wonky Whistle, where suddenly Thomas's intelligence has dropped to that of a cheese waffle. Surely Gordon doesn't have to tell them how freaking gravity works. Then we cringe as they lose their cargo again, because Percy decided to drag it through a tunnel, and Thomas was too spineless to speak up that it would destroy the cargo. Thomas wasn't sure at all, but he didn't want to upset his best friend Percy. And I don't want my friends to be upset either. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to reject the idea of Bungie jumping off the harbour bridge without a harness. By the time they've lost their third balloon, you're just questioning. Mr. Topham, why have you not assigned someone else to do this? It's taken them all day. Gordon clearly knows what he's doing. Why don't you send him to do it? He could probably do it in 10 minutes. Thomas! What are you doing? Buddy, at this point, we've got to blame you for this. These two clearly have zero competence. You've assigned them to do this three times and they've continually caused havoc on the island. What do you think's going to happen the fourth time? I guess the overall message to kids is, okay, don't be a spineless dweeb and throw basic safety precautions to the wind to avoid upsetting people. But hey, the new seasons are still a major step up from All Engines Go. That, that was major trash. Number 6. Caillou's New Adventures, Episode No Dessert. You are under arrest, mister. Oh, at last they caught him. Lock him away, cops. Take him downtown. Oh, I suppose you think there's a worse episode of Caillou's New Adventures than this? Well, why don't you prove it and watch the entirety of Caillou's New Adventures like I did? I didn't think so. You've got more common sense than that. I don't. And of all the episodes I watched, this was Caillou at his brattiest. I don't want broccoli! Oh, sorry. I think this one drove me slightly mad. Personally, I still think this is better than the old version of the show. I'm a fan of Wild Brain, and I think they've done an exceptional job with the Caillou franchise from the miserable wreck it was before. But it's hard to break old habits, and that streak of terror is still alive and well in Caillou. Even in these new episodes, sometimes he is an absolute twerp. So we start No Dessert with Caillou throwing a tantrum, refusing to eat broccoli, and his no longer passive parents ground him. That's it, Caillou. Go to your room. No dessert, you're grounded. So he proceeds to break out of his room to go with his friends. Ah, now this is a little monster I know and hate. Unfortunately, Caillou's brattiness is matched only by his incompetence. Seriously, this kid can't even manage to look across to cheat without falling out of his chair. But who gives a five-year-old an F? Anyway, our incompetent little terror is caught escaping red-handed. So he admits to his mistake, says he's sorry, yada yada yada. The other thing that drives me mad is there seems to be only one track of trumpeting stock music for about three seasons worth of this new show. But again, I still think this is way better than the original series. And the fact that this was the worst episode of New Caillou I could find, props to Wild Brain for that. But maybe try just a couple more stock music tracks? Oh, look at the invisible time. Until we begrudgingly meet again, Caillou. Number 5.
Bob the Builder 2015, Grid Block. Creepy Pasta Bob, we're back. And we've got a bone to pick with you. Can we build it? Possibly. But we'll most certainly knock it down afterwards due to sheer incompetence. Creepy Pasta Bob keeps each episode pretty similar. They try to build it, and one of the pieces of the equipment is too incompetent and will inevitably wreck the project. Rinse and repeat every episode. And watching Creepy Pasta Bob for this long, I saw some amusing screenshots. This was my particular favorite. At first, it looks like she's about to kiss Bob. Then it looks like she's telling him a dirty secret. Then it very clearly is Bob checking out her rear. Truly, Bob, in this moment, you look like a stereotypical construction worker, admiring a lady's rear. Or if you swing the other way, maybe admiring your fellow colleague's rear. There's a South Korean animator out there smirking, knowing exactly what they sent back and no one took the time to notice. Anyway, based on a very limited data size, we can see the lowest rated episodes of this already hated show are Muck on Ice, Lofty Let's Loose, and Scoop's Big Break. Each one receiving around a 2 out of 10 star rating, so pretty bad. But Gridlock was personally recommended by my community, probably due to how pants on head stupid everything everyone is in it. Bob puts Dizzy in charge of building traffic lights at a busy intersection. Dizzy being the small, immature, hyperactive one. In charge of the rush hour intersection. Do you see the problem here? Because clearly Bob didn't, and apparently everyone's cool with this. So we have to listen to Dizzy's loud, annoying, syrupy voice the whole way. Before Dizzy's incompetence inevitably causes a nine car pileup. That's brilliant, Dizzy. I want you to lead the build. You think? See, Bob, even the immature cement mixer is raising its eyebrow at you. This next nine car pileup is on you, buddy. Lofty Let's Loose, I found fine enough by my bottom rung standards for this show. They build a zoo enclosure and Lofty gets distracted. But Lofty at least has the common sense to put his load on the ground before getting distracted. We'll get to that later. Scoop's big break, on the other hand, is definitely one of the worst contenders. Scoop takes their turn to be as annoying and mentally vapid as possible. In fact, he can't even say the word breaker, instead saying, da, 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 da. Scoop, it's called a breaker. I want to get breaking! I mean, careful! Brilliant! Let's put this overexcited, childlike industrial truck in charge of dangerous, deadly electrical equipment. What could go wrong? So, of course, within five minutes, Scoop has botched the job and tries to hide the truth from Bob. Why? You can't even manage to say the word breaker. Bob is absolutely expecting you to botch this project up. So this Nimrod spends the rest of the episode trying to hide his mistake that is inevitably going to cause havoc on the construction site. I feel like even the young kids will be looking at the TV saying, why? And here, my friend, is the worst part. What's happened? Not to kill the mood, but back in the day I did my diploma in criminal justice. And if Wendy or Bob had been under that, we'd call that involuntary manslaughter due to criminal negligence. As for Muck on Ice, it takes the cake as the most boring episode, with all the equipment being useless and just sliding around on ice, destroying the ice rink they built in the process. Anyway, these lousy episodes aside, there must be some irony that the new Bob the Builder has nothing new to bring to viewers. Number 4. Fireman Sam, The Last Straw. Ah, Fireman Sam. The original was actually my favorite show when I was under six. Fireman Sam, you cannot Sam is the hero next like Bob the Builder, this is Mattel's modern CG remake of the show. It tries to capture the spirit of the old show. Or sell toys, I'm honestly not sure. Help Fireman Sam save the day with Neptune and the Boathouse playset. Each sold separately. My mum watched the original show with me when I was a kid, and I wanted to know her feedback upon seeing this new remake. Sam looks like he's got an undiagnosed thyroid condition, perhaps an enlarged goiter gland. But Sam's glandular problems aside, both shows are about the highly accident-prone Welsh town of Ponty Pandy, and, and the many, many fires and disasters that start there. I mean, my first complaint in the show was Norman is annoying. 
But Norman's been annoying for two years longer than I've been alive, so nothing too unusual there. Naughty Norman Price. Sam himself is still in character though. He still has his old level-headed, cool and calm attitude, even in the face of danger. And I've always admired that about him as far back as I can remember. Anyway, our main contender for the worst episode is The Last Straw where <gasps> Fireman Sam and Ellie have to bathe the dog. If your dog doesn't like baths, you just have to make bath time fun. Oh no, and Sarah has to rake up hay at the stables. Whoa, slow down episode. You're getting a bit too exciting for me here. Finally, the haystack catches fire. Oh, thank goodness, something happened. Will the animals be okay? Young lady, animals and fire just don't mix. We lost three billion animals with a B in the last Australian forest fire. But don't worry, the animals are fine. Somehow. Seriously, look at the size of that inferno. How? So yeah, overall, it's a pretty boring, slow-paced episode. And doesn't make the Fireman Sam remake look very interesting. I didn't realize until I saw the show without that original, painstakingly fiberglass stop motion that it would lose some of its inherent charm in the CG remake. But hey, at least newer generations get a better chance to enjoy it with this remake. Number three. Thomas and Friends Wonky Whistle. Perhaps the most notorious episode in Thomas and Friends history. But I've discussed this episode before a couple of years ago, so I'll keep it brief. Just everything goes so wrong in this episode. And I just can't get over Michael Angelus' delivery. He just sounds so fed up in this episode. All the engines were busy hooting and tooting. He seriously sounds like he's about to walk off the set and I love it. And Thomas sounds like he's been huffing helium. Please hurry, Victor. I want to be puffing perfectly for the country show. I never understand this. Do kids show producers think kids are allergic to deep voices? Why can't kids show voices just sound normal? The original Thomas and Friends didn't sound like the actors were huffing helium, and kids love that show. My favorite station is Fafakwa, said Thomas. Anyway, tangent aside, like an up and away, Thomas is obliviously stupid in this episode. Wait, Thomas! He blew his wonky whistle loud and long. He just seems to pay attention to nothing going on around him here. He sends wild cattle barraging out of his carriage into crowded areas, gooses wildly flying out in terror, he even sends the sheep into a rampage. Why do all these animals go mad when they hear Thomas? Well, they say it's his wonky whistle. My wonky whistle has scared the sheep. But if I heard that alien helium voice, I think I'd be running in terror too. And the whole way, the narrator sounds like he's rolling his eyes, being sarcastic as he speaks. Thomas started his journey again. I would love to know what got him so annoyed in this episode. It's hilarious. I've always liked to think he knew this this episode was an almost literal train wreck. And maybe he realized after so many years voice acting the show, he was about to narrate the worst episode in the series. And just to suspend your disbelief further, apparently they got all the animals back after they stampeded off into the forest by giving them their favorite food in the carriage. What, come on, who are you kidding? On a side note, if you would like to see me do a full Worst Thomas Episodes video, let me know in the comments. And number two. Bluey, episode Tina. It didn't take me long to realize why Tina was the lowest rated Bluey episode. Bluey and Bingo both act uncharacteristically like absolute brats. Uh, seven. Yes, Bluey? <clears throat> I mean, yes, Bluey the Awesome. It all starts when they refuse to put their dishes in the dishwasher when their dad asks them to. Because I guess putting something in a dishwasher is really difficult. I don't know. Honestly, I find stacking those things more difficult than just cleaning them by hand. So partially because of this, they make an imaginary friend called Tina. Since apparently she's very big, they use this as an excuse to boss around their dad and mum. Honestly, their parents' dedication to playing along with their kids' imaginary games is downright respectable. I swear these two could start an interpretive theatre company. So we spend most of the episode watching mum and dad get bossed around by Tina. And the two just get more and more demanding and terrible, treating their parents like slaves. And yeah, it definitely gets kind of cringe and unpleasant to me. Again, I get that kids are going to be bratty sometimes, whether we like it or not. But in this case, it just feels they've gone way too far 
far and it's just not very pleasant to watch. By the end, there is an important message being given. But by the time Bluey is asking her dad to help her chew her food, it's, it's just like, no. Help me chew. <sighs> Young lady, I think you need a little quiet time in your room. By the end, the house is a crap hole and flies are everywhere. And I'm just like, the parents' dedication to this bit. These are the most patient parents in the world. But I think there's something good to be taken from almost every Bluey episode. And by the end here, we actually see there's a subtle message to the parents. Kids, when we tell you you have to have a bath or brush your teeth or wash your hands, it's because there's a good reason to do all those things. It's encouraging authoritative parenting instead of authoritarian parenting. Authoritative parenting is basically saying to kids, do this because we love you and we know it'll help you. Brush your teeth so your teeth don't fall out. While authoritarian parenting is basically do it because I said so. Brush your teeth because I said so. One, One two, two, three. Yeah, yeah, you've heard it before. So yeah, as far as quote unquote worst episodes of Bluey, this is about as subpar as a show has ever managed. Which again, is still not saying much. Bluey's awesome. But I am really curious, if you are a Bluey fan, would you agree that Tina and Charades are some of the worst episodes? Or do you still think they're pretty good episodes? I'm really curious about how people feel about Bluey having actual worst episodes, so let me know what you think in the comments. And last of all, at number one, Paw Patrol, Pup Saves Bedtime. Well, I can't make fun of Canadian cartoons anymore because they produce Paw Patrol. And it's taken my country and so many other countries around the world by storm. In this world, there's only one thing more certain than entropy in Texas. And that is that kids really like Paw Patrol. Kids love Paw Patrol. Everywhere you go, it's everywhere. The show started in 2013 and it's just kept going. Every year, constantly, there, there is always new episodes of Paw Patrol. There is so many episodes of this show and they just all look the same to me. So I constrain the possible worst episodes to 2019 or later. And even then, there's still a crap ton of contenders. Pup saves a gold miner. Pup saves the tour bus. Pup saves chalk art. Pup saves a show jumper. Pup saves the mayor. Pup saves the queen duck. What does that even mean? Pup saves the tooth fairy. Pup saves yoga goats. Yoga goats. And finally, we landed on Pup Saves Bedtime with the lowest rating of 2.8. But let me give you a quick brief of what the show's about. So at least then next time your child, niece or nephew tells you about it, you know what's going on. My favorite summary comes from a reviewer named Muscove. <laughs> Orphan kid fights crime with his mutant slave dogs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'd argue he's potentially a very rich orphan kid too, because how else does he afford all this? It's a bit like Fireman Sam, but with dogs and laser focused on the action and rescue part. Basically, these rescue dogs go out to rescue people and each one has a specific duty in an emergency. Batteries not included, each sold separately. But anyway, on to the lowest rated episode, Pup Saves Bedtime. And yeah, I can see why. It's a bit of a cringe fest. The Paw Patrol need to rescue the Turbot Boys, who seem to be in danger of dying from stupidity. I hear that's a common thing in this show. As a giant monkey monster is jumping on the roof of the ruins they're in, and they vouch, not to leave the building. Instead, they put their hands above their head. Brilliant, boys. You're lucky you're in a kid's cartoon or you'd be horribly crushed by falling debris. They're left trapped in the ruins with a giant monkey monster. So the Paw Patrol have to rescue them with their Micro Machine supercars. Batteries are not included, each sold separately. Available now. Trust me, if you understand this Paw Patrol episode, you'll understand every Paw Patrol episode. They're basically the same. Now here is my huge nitpick, and it's a stupid one. One of the Turbo Brothers is apparently French and has a quote unquote French accent. Do not tell me, the artist in the family, how to take the picture. So how is this the most unconvincing French accent I've ever heard? Again, this is a Canadian cartoon. It's kind of a thing there. Canada has no shortage of French speakers. Of course, there are hundreds of thousands of French speaking Canadians who live outside Quebec. This is a real French accent. Grounded in the same ideals of the American and French revolutions. This is what a real French crowd looks like. I'm sorry, is it? The French are awesome and I hate this show's lazy human character design. Anyway, the episode story is stupid and oversimplistic. All this giant monkey wants is his teddy back. 
and it takes the crew the entire episode to figure this out. So they use their stupid micro machines to get all of them out and yada 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 the end. As far as I'm concerned, Paw Patrol is nothing special. Its CG seems to be just good enough quality to draw the kids in. It has lots of transforming rescue vehicles and cute dogs, and has managed to mix these concepts together somehow to be really addictive to the kids. But hey, if this episode is the worst they can offer, I say it's harmless enough, much like a lot of these other shows. Given we're now in the 2020s, I think the bar for kids cartoons has gotten way higher than it was 20-30 years ago. I grew up in the age of Barney, Tweenies, and Vomit Tubbies. We've come a long way. And obviously, there's a ton of different shows out there that could be called young kids cartoons. So let me know if you had any personal choices for this list in the comments. Or feel free to just say hi. I always like that. And as always, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Today's member question is from Blue Blur Sonic. Their question is, if you and Nin could make a cartoon, what would it be and what morals would you incorporate? It's a good question, Sonic, but honestly, I have no confidence in my ability to make a decent cartoon. As for one I would enjoy making, maybe a personal project? I keep it very simple and make a cartoon similar to Puff and Rock, which is probably my favorite kids cartoon of all time. But it'd probably be set in the Australian bush and be about talking animals like kangaroos or cockatoos or corellas. I think I would make one of the animals on the spectrum and talk about how they handle day-to-day -day difficulties, but I'd try not to bludgeon people over the head with it and just make them another normal character. Thanks for the question.